Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I am bringing you today another in our series from Ho Oahu, Hawaii. Um, this is picking up where we left off in our last video um, with continuing photos from the Polynesian Cultural Polynesian Cultural Center on the um, windward side of the island up towards uh, Turtle Bay, kind of, in that general area. Anyway, um, fantastic place. If you have never been there, you've got to go. If you do go to Hawaii, that has to be one of, your, one of the places that you stop. You will learn more there about Hawaiian and island culture in the Pacific than just about anywhere else on the island. So, um, so definitely make it a stop there. This is going to be a fairly quick layout today. There is not a lot to it, so um, let's check out what I've got in my workspace. Okay, so today we are going to do a layout that is um, taken from a virtual crop sketch. This is from back in March. You may uh, recall seeing this before, but um, this layout is relatively simple, like I said, and it is done in such a way that you can get four photos on one page. So a double page spread would give you enough room for eight photos if you had them going the right directions and all was right with the world. Meaning that what you're using it for has eight photos that you need to put on a page uh, on a double page spread. Sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. This is one of those times when I don't, so I am going to be modifying this slightly. You're not going to see a photos arranged like this on my two pages, but I am going to do the layout um, decoration or, um, you know, the, the accent papers and things like that just the way they've got it here. So um, let's see how it turns out. Okay, so I'm just going to set this over here for a reference and we'll get started. Today um, we're going to do the pages focusing on Tonga. Tonga is um, an, another one of the islands in the Pacific. They are very well known for their drums and their drumming. Um, when you go to the, the um, Polynesian Cultural Center, they will show you different things in different areas that are focused on specific islands and in this particular area that focuses on the Kingdom of Tonga they have um, a replica of the Queen's summer home and in that replica they have an actual throne and um, so I think in a previous video I had shown you a photo of that and I got it mixed up and so I have to fix that um, but here also you can learn how they make um, the cloth that is used and that will be in a in a different layout but they um, they make cloth from bark which is pretty a pretty interesting and um, tedious process, but if you don't have anything else, I suppose that that's pretty amazing and remarkable that they know how to do that. Um, we learned how to throw a spear, and they have a little contest that you can do to, um, to try it if you want, and try and knock these coconuts off of posts and stuff. Kind of fun. Um, and let's see. They, it says on here, paddle and outrigger canoe, but they weren't, didn't have those working when we were there. Um, so I don't know if they're going to start working on those again now that COVID is over or not. I am using um, some papers that are from a couple of different collections. So this orange paper with the flower on it is from Tropic Time. And it has the larger green flowers on the back. This paper over here that looks a little bit like fish scales and has the blue and the green, this is from Serene Waters. It has the water moving uh, lines on the back. And this paper right here, um, which is kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, it looks like a matte 
oh boy, why do I do that? I'm, I'm just fine. I don't burp at all. And then I start, start to record and my body freaks out. I'm, I'm so, so sorry. Um, and this one is from a different collection and I don't have it I don't have it in my head at the moment, but I will remember and put it in the comments or in the description. So if you're wanting to know where this burlap um, like paper came from, I will, I will find out and put it in there. So let me scoot these pictures over. I have a five by seven enlargement that's going to go on this page. This is a, um, in the big, in the entrance area of the PCC, they have these for each country, and it gives just you know some basic information. And whenever I find stuff like this, I I try to take photos of it because I feel like I will never remember all these details, but I can um, I can take a picture and then have that for my scrapbook, and then I will remember and be able to refresh my memory as time goes on. Okay, so we're gonna double mat this picture just like we double matted the one for Tahiti. Um, and because we're going to double mat it, I'm going to, um, let me see. I want the initial mat that's closest to the photo to be a little smaller, so I'm going to make it about five and three eighths. So it'll be a little bit wider than an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to cut the length at seven and three eighths so that the frame is the same when I center the photo. All right, so here we go. And that's much more than I expected. Strange. All right. So I need to adjust that because that's going to be too much. Or I could just, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and center the photo on this and then trim the bottom so that my frame is even all the way around the photo. I'm not sure why my measurements were off on that. Maybe I cut it incorrectly somehow. Or maybe the picture is just slightly not quite right. I don't know. Not sure what the reason is there, but I am cutting about an eighth of an inch off of this. Not much, but just a little. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add this on to my blue and green fish scales that are over here, which are going to be my slightly wider frame around this picture. We'll trim it. This is about a quarter of an inch away from the picture. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is flip my strip because it's starting to look a little bit ragged, and that may be part of the reason I'm getting some irregularness to my cuts. So we'll just flip that over. Oh yeah, just like butter, as they say. Okay, so we've got our framed center focus. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to have, I want to be able to mat this guy as well. So I can cut it down just a little and then frame it, which I think I might do just to kind of keep it a little more uniform. There we go. Okay, 
I don't know if I want to cut this side. It's a little wonky, but I don't want to cut more of those boxes. Yeah, well, that helped just a tiny bit. My psyche, if nothing else, right? So this, you may recall, these little um, pieces that have the information about what's done in each area, these come from a um, pamphlet that was put out about the activities there, which I broke apart. And so because of that, I am, I'm not going to worry about putting it in. It's obviously not photo safe paper is the point I'm trying to get to. Um, but I'm not going to worry about putting it in anything special to keep it away from my photos or other things. I am just mounting it onto photo safe paper so that it won't come in direct contact with my paper or front with my page. Um, not that I expect there to be any, you know, funny business, but you just never know. So, um, it is something to think about now and then, depending on what you are putting in your albums. Um, sometimes the chemicals that are used in the printing process are not friendly to scrapbooks and they can cause, um, issues. Okay, so I have a what looks like a 4x4 four four square left, just over 4 inches. Yep, just over 4 inches, squ roughly square. And I have this one, which is almost 4 inches wide, but not quite. And I need four inch, two 4 inch squares to create my triangles with. So I think I'm going to just use my burlap and we'll cut two four inch squares from the burlap. One and two. And we'll save this other one for another time. Okay, so I'm going to take those, I'm going to stack them, and I'm going to go ahead and cut these from one upper left corner to the lower right corner, so opposite corners, to make my triangles. Okay, and so now I have four triangles that I can use, and I could use the other side of them. Let's just see which one we like better. I think this side may blend into my paper a little bit too much. We may want to use the darker side. It may complement our photos better as well. I don't know. We'll have to see which one we like best. Okay, now I also need to make some flags. And I'm going to use the orange paper to make a couple of flags. So first I'm going to start by making a a one inch strip and then I'm going to make a strip that is one and a half inches. Okay, so we've got a one and a half and we've got a one inch and this piece may or may not be extra. And then I need a paper that I can make Um, some half inch strips with. So I'm going to use this peach colored, lighter peach colored paper. I think it looks pretty. So I'm just going to make a couple of half inch strips for accenting this page. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do, but I reserve the right to go back to my to my trimmer later, possibly. We shall see. Okay, now if you have, oh, we do need to cut these down. I beg your pardon. Sorry guys, I'm a little flighty today. Okay, so I need two pieces of the one and a half inch wide that are six and a half inch long. And I don't have, I'm not going to have enough to make two with this one strip. 
and my other what I have left over is not long enough so I are not wide enough sorry so I can either I can either use this strip which is going to be about a quarter of an inch shy or I could just use the short strip which will, will have the same width and I think I'm inclined to do that because one is designed to put your title on it the other one is just going to be an accent so I think I'm just going to go ahead and keep those like that and then I need two that are five and a half inch I'm sorry we're doing again the six and a half and then we'll have a shorter strip which is okay again. Okay, so we're going to do like that. Then these half inch pieces are going to be five and a half inches long. So I'm just going to stack these. And actually, we only need one of them. So maybe we'll just save that one for another day. So we only need, we need two that are five and a half inches. So I'm just going to trim this one real quick. That one's five and a half. And this one will be five and a half. And here's our little bit that's left, which we don't need to keep. Okay, so there's our two. So now we have our ribbons cut for here and here. And we'll use some embellishment for um, the area where the flowers are on our sketch. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this shapes up and then we will make our determinations from there. Okay, so we're going to have one triangle down here in this spot and another triangle up here in this spot. And like I said before, we can... We will have a ribbon, let's see, we'll have a ribbon coming off of here. So this is going to be a, need to be a little bit more in the middle. And this one will need to be kind of more to the side. Maybe more like so. All right, we need to make some flags. Do you have a flag punch? If you have a flag punch, that will come in handy. It looks like this and it will automatically cut that right angle into the end of your strip. So, they're very handy, they're very easy to use. You take your one inch strip, there's a, there's a um, spot right there in the middle for your one inch strip, and you just feed it right in until it won't feed any further, and punch, and you have your ribbon. Or you can take your strip and you can fold it. Grab your creative memory scissors, because we all love those. Fold your paper from corner to corner. Don't crease it. You don't need to crease it. You just need to fold it. And then go ahead and come up about, about a half an inch on the folded edge and cut to the point. Or if, you're, if you folded it the other way, cut from the point to the center up about a half an inch. And that will give you your flag as well. So we're going to make, um, if, if you have this in between size and you have your flag punch, just go ahead and center your strip and it will cut your flag right in the middle. But again, if you want, you can fold it because not everybody has the, the, the cool flag punch. So you can fold it and just cut very easily and make your flag. Okay, We're going to do the same thing with these two guys. And actually, I'm just noticing, <laughs> you got to watch me. 
I don't know. I am having a hard time today, I guess. But we are going to need that other strip, and we are going to need two more five and a half inch pieces. So, glad I cut this. And let's just go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and cut two more five and a half inch strips. So that I have one for each triangle. Oh my goodness! I just have to share, my daughter just showed up after school in her brand new dress that she sewed all by herself, ladies. She looks really cute. I'll try to take a picture and show you at a later date, but that's really cute. It still needs the buttons and then a bow, and they need to hem Sweet. the bottom. Sweet! But, but... It's perfect for summer because, like, I am moving like this and I feel like I'm wearing nothing, but I clearly am wearing something. <laughs> You're very cute. I really like it. It turned out so nice. And, 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 okay. invisible zipper works, goes all the way up. An invisible zipper. And the buttons fully close. Fully closing fully buttons close. is always a good yeah. idea. Yes. No straining either. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the flags into the end of these. You're cute. Yay. <laughs> I'm, I, you'll have to tell me what your teacher said. It's always fun when they're excited about stuff they've been able to accomplish. She has really loved the sewing class that she's in at school. And being able to sew her own clothes is a dying art, you know? So, that's really exciting for her. All right, so we've got four our four flags in our half inch strips. Half inch, five and a half inch, and by half inch strips. So getting rid of those little guys. All right, let me just set this to the side and we'll get this assembled, okay? Hope you don't mind my, my cute daughter sharing today. Okay, let's just take a look at what this is gonna look like with our different flags and ribbons. Okay, so this is meant to come off of the center. And then we'll have this guy also coming off of the center about halfway. Half deep, I suppose I should say, like this. And then we'll have some embellishments on top. Now, the using the other color, we'll do the one on this side and just see which one we like best. This might be a little bit, yeah, I think I'm going to need to cut down this one because our, this one is short by about an inch or maybe three quarters of an inch. So if I cut that down, that'll work. But um, just for the sake of trying to decide which side to use, which color we want to use, let me lay out some of these pictures so you can see uh, what they look like. There's a lot of green in these, but we do have the thatched roof also, which is kind of cool. So I'm, that's not the layout the photos are going to be in. I'm just trying to see color-wise whether I like the um, darker one versus the lighter one. I think I like the dark one best. 
Although the light one picks up the light in this, but and I had to make this matte lighter from the lighter side because of the dark around in in the photo. But I think I like the dark. Okay, let's just do that. Okay, we're gonna go with the dark. All right, and let me trim. So those are gonna be there, these are gonna be here, and I need to trim this down so that it's, how much is that I'm gonna to need to trim? I need to trim about an inch, inch and a quarter off of these two. Maybe. Maybe not an inch and a quarter. I'm sorry, hang on. Let's see. I want that to be about right there, which is not an inch and a quarter. That would be too short. I'm gonna trim three quarters of an inch. We'll see what that gets us. Okay, so these two are gonna lose three quarters of an inch. And I, rather than getting my trimmer back out, I think I'm just going to trim these quickly just like this all right so certainly not the most you know supremely accurate but not bad I don't think all right, so we're going to turn this one over and turn this one over. And let's grab our repositionable adhesive for these angles on the triangles. And go ahead and get this done. We said this is gonna be a fast layout. There's not a lot to it. So hopefully we won't have two much of a big deal. Okay, so this goes all the way to the jeeping and I'm starting at about a quarter of an inch from the from the edge. Same thing with this guy. And this guy is going to go, oh, nope, you know what? I'm leading you astray again. Wow, I'm doing that a lot today. So sorry. I do apologize. But I should have looked at my sketch before I started laying these down. Okay, let's try this again. So this is this bottom of this one's going to be about a half inch up and then we have about another quarter inch so this is going to go about roughly three quarters of an inch from the base so three quarters of an inch from your bottom edge then this low this smaller piece goes halfway over that edge of the top ribbon I was a little bit off, you can see right there. It's okay though. All right, so that's the way we're gonna do it for all of the rest of these. I had a very sweet comment from a, a subscriber, a brand new subscriber to my channel from Nova Scotia, Canada. Hi, Allie. Um, and I hope that she's watching these. She's um, kind of new to my channel, but she's been, she said, <laughs> she said I was keeping her company while she is scrapbooking and doing some projects, which was so sweet. I love to hear that kind of stuff. If you guys turn me on, even though if you're not doing my project and you just listen to keep me, 
keep you company. I think that's fantastic. Okay, so a half inch from the top and flush with the jeeping in the center, we're going to put this ribbon on. And I'm just making sure that that's going on and staying level. Like so. Then we're going to do this one. Okay, so this one's going to go flush against the jeeping in the center and halfway or approximately halfway over the, that lower edge of that top ribbon so that it's offset just a little bit. Okay, then we're going to come back and, and we'll talk about where to place this, these photos, but I think it's going to be something like that and then we'll have maybe a journal box or something in there as well. I may need a mat. We'll see. When we were in um, this area of the PCC, we learned about their colorful um, costumes and we learned that Tonga and Tahiti have like a, a rivalry for their drumming and the Tonga, the program that they do has a lot of drumming with very large drums Whereas the drumming that, you, that they do in the Tahiti area is a lot of drumming, but they use much smaller drums. So it was fascinating to me when we got to Tonga and saw the huge drums that they use. Um, after we'd been hearing them literally all over the PCC the whole time that we had been there and we finally were there for their little program because each area does their own little introductory program to teach you about their nation which is fantastic and just you can see these these giant drums they have back here and they have volunteers from the audience come and drum my brother-in-law, when he was there visiting, I think he went and drummed. He was one of the volunteers, which is fun. Um, and I didn't get any pictures of the people who were, did the drumming, but um, anyway, it was very entertaining, super fun, and very loud drums. But. That is a huge part of island culture. So it was good. Okay, I'm just switching my pages here so that I can um, go ahead and make sure that my ribbons are in the same place. So I can place this at the same level. Of course, I if I was measuring better, then yes, I could, I could make sure that it was accurate. But I'm not a measurer; I'm more a visual, so this helps helps me make sure it stays level. Seems like it's not short enough, which is strange to me, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to trim off just a tiny bit more of this one, maybe just a quarter of an inch, so that the proportions are better. There, that's better. 
All right, so now going back to how we're laying this out. All right. So I have two photos of this guy. I actually have three photos of him because there's I have one that's even farther away. You see the headband he has on here? That is woven from leaves of the banana uh, the banana trees that they have there. Banana trees? No. Which one is it? It's a specific tree you can see in the background back here. But anyway, they show you how to how to weave those while you're there if you want to, which is kind of cool. And um, he was he was interesting. The things that he taught us were very cool. So I think what I'm going to do is put these two photos right next to each other. Then we're going to put these two squares in the center. And I'm going to find a mat that I can use for a journal box to add to the left side of the page. Okay, so I'm going to put these edge to edge and about an eighth of an inch from the jeeping on the outside edge. And now I have a picture stuck to my elbow. Do you see that? <laughs> oh dear. So fun. Okay. And so I'm going to just do a little bit of a jaunty angles with those. Okay. Then with this one Center this between the ribbons at the top and the, rib the ribbon at the top and the ribbon at the bottom. Just make sure it's not crooked according to the jeeping on the outside of the page. There we go, like that. Then we've got this little guy who will go here. I wish I had used this over here. So maybe what I should do is go ahead and mat this photo using this extra piece of the scale paper. That way I can bring that kind of over onto the right side. And look at that. That's a perfect piece of paper. I love it when a plan comes together. Perfect. Okay. Like I planned it or something. <laughs> I didn't. But I like it when that happens. Okay. So we'll just kind of stick that right there. Right back where it was. Mm -hmm. But just with a little bit of added color. Alright. And then I'm going to use this bit and we're going to grab a, oh, you know what we could do? I've got these extra photos of some cool plants and things like that um, that would bring more green over here to this side, which I think we need. So maybe I'll just do that instead of adding a journal box because I actually have a leaf 
that we, I could use to do some journaling. And I don't have a lot of journaling I need to do on this page. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to adjust this just a little. This is scrapbooking in real time, folks. So it's a little bit more of a try this and see what happens thing when you um, when you're doing it and not following a plan exactly. So that would be me today not following a plan exactly. So I'm just going to add this in and I'm going to make it level with the other with the mat right here so that's at the same level and then this will go down here framed by a similar size margin around it like that. Alright I'm happier with that. That turned out better. Okay, it's more balanced. We definitely needed something right there. So, and I'm glad I had something green that I could just put right in there. All right, so I have some cool things we could also add. I have this. This is from Tropic Time, an embellishment from Tropic Time, which we could just add in there. It has some cool leaves that, um, are similar to what we are um, going to be decorating with today. I've got this leaf shape which also could be used since that's our journaling box so I can stick that maybe up there just a little bit so I don't cover up all my decorations down here. I've got these two cute things and, a, and the cute um, note that says we're staying and we could use the orange or we could use the green. I think the green is cute and might help carry the green over a little more into this corner. I was thinking I was going to need more orange but now that I'm looking at this I don't think so. I think we'll just Maybe put that in there, kind of like so. I have these palm trees, which are awesome, but I think we're not going to use them on this page. I think I'm going to wait and use them on something else. We've got these monstera leaves, which are kind of the theme for both. Uh, both of these embellishments have them, so I think we will use those up here. And maybe I will put my title over here instead of um, in there. Maybe we could we could double that. One's a sun, one's a flower, but they are kind of similar. I don't know. I could make that one go off just a little bit like so. I think I need one more embellishment, which I don't have, and maybe something else for down here also. Maybe I'll we'll just stick this guy in here, kind of like that. And maybe this guy over here. These green leaves that I'm using right here are from the vitamin C collection. Embellishments from vitamin C. Um, but they are really fun and they do add a lot of texture to your layouts. Okay, so let me see. I added some more
There's another. We could do matching on either side, but I don't know if I want to do that. Sun and fun. This one says loving right now. Flowers. More leaves. And if you're wondering what I'm looking for, I don't know. I don't know what I'm looking for, but... Maybe some white. Maybe we'll leave the sun up there and add a flower. And then put some flowers on the other side. I think that'll work. We'll just set that over there for a minute. If we put a flower right here, maybe maybe two. And then we could add, pull some of the white. I can add a flower right there as well. I think that'll work. So I'm just going to pop those up with some foam squares and then this layout is going to be done. I'm not going to worry about popping that lower leaf up. Just going to add some foam squares to this embellishment to get it lifted up off of the page. And I'm going to put one right in the middle just to keep it from sinking. And the other things that are down here in this corner with it are going to be flush on the page because I'm going to need to be able to write on them. That's already sticky. So I'm going to scoot that over like so. I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive because then I don't have to worry so much about where it goes. This guy can go right under here. Looks like I got my foam square a little close. That's okay though. All right. And we need to add this guy as well. And we'll add these guys. I'm going to put my, again, my leaf is going to go on flat on the page. I'm going to pop these larger things up. Not larger, but these more um, colorful things up. I like the little little hint of yellow that the sun brings up there because he has yellow in his skirt. His, I don't think it's called a skirt. I think it's called a moo moo or something. Anyway, there's a, I'm sure there's a name for it. If you know the name for it, maybe you can type it in the comments. Because clearly I have forgotten. And I apologize. All right, so the other leaf is going to go over here on this side. We're going to add this sort of longer leaf. It's going to curl towards the center. And then these guys are going to get foam squares. Come on. that. Okay, hang 
again. My foam square is not cooperating. All right, there we go. Okay, and then these guys down here. Again, this guy is going to get... Put in flush on the page. This one... Let's see, I want him to stand up. Let me see if I can get a foam square into each one of these corners. Oops, I dropped it. Each one of these little corners. Without it showing. And this one shows just a little. Okay, and then maybe just one at the top. Then we can put a foam square on our little sign. And stick that on top. Like so. All right. All done. What do we think? It's interesting when you can take a sketch and it's a one page sketch, but you can turn it into a two page sketch and kind of alter it to fit what you've got, right? I think it turned out marvelous. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you've been inspired by this and you maybe can use it in your albums. That's my intention each time I sit down and try to record something for you. So um, I hope that it has been useful for you today. And until next time, I wish you many more creative moments. Have a great day.